Right at it. Right at it. Oh, John and he's Spence. done it again. Just as he did at the John Deere for his first win. Hello and welcome to episode number 110 of the Go Get That podcast. We are back, finally. Uh, Last time you heard from us, it was episode 109, and we were previewing the Tiger Woods Invitational down in Los Angeles. Um, Unfortunately, the recap didn't come out. We had to withdraw it, actually. Um, (laughs) And maybe we'll get into that today. No, Bob. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that already. But just me and Jordan chopping up. Uh, we'll probably discuss Genesis a little bit just because we haven't done so. And then we will hop into um, API uh, this week. Fun fun track. Start of the Florida swing. Big kind of three, four-week stretch here as we get ever so close to Augusta National. Um, we'll also give some updates on the triple-double game leaderboard uh not good for the fans of the dan camp but anyway <laughs> we're back and excited to be at arnie's place yeah it's well said i'm happy to be back as always got a nice little two-week break which was nice mentally um and yeah we haven't you know chatted since uh jordan speak was disqualified from a pga tour event a signature event kicked off told to not return to play saturday um so we haven't discussed that yet and yeah kind of as you said very fun stretch coming up you got api players valspar back to back to back um a couple houston. places maybe Sorry. houston yeah that's that's true it could be four in a row we're still kind of waiting to see if he's going to play houston or valero but um yeah at least three coming up he's played really really good golf at two of them so a lot to be excited about and he's been playing great golf besides you know that fluke round friday at riviera yeah, well, let's go there. Um, Speed WD after signing a card that had a three on the par five, excuse me, the par three fourth when he made a four. Um, I guess Tom Kim gave it to him basically, but Mr. Kim, this is stroke play and this is Mr. Speed from four feet. So the likelihood of it going in is uh, a lot lower than you might anticipate. Uh, he should know that being from Dallas. Anyway. Um, kind of dumb, I think, like just the way that that's the rule, uh, and that it's not even his own card that's wrong, it's his playing partners who are supposed to take note of his score who got it wrong. Um, but I don't know that that round on Friday was so bad, and it seems like he would have withdrawn anyway come saturday given the um this sort of his physical state because it seemed like he was pretty sick uh and that's that was the reporting after the round so i i don't know if you have a different take on it but it seems like the week at riv was going to get cut short regardless of how it was done yeah, it was. I mean, it's just an all around unfortunate circumstance. Obviously, having another playing your playing partner write the wrong score for you. Um, and if he's feeling 100%, I think that's an error that probably doesn't happen, or Jordan at least corrects it. I don't really know because it seemed like he was shaking hands on that Friday and then he had to run to the restroom. So I'm sure he yeah. signed Tom Kim's card, but I'm sure if he was, you know, feeling 100%, he's probably taking a little bit more time to really make sure that Tom Kim and put the correct score for, um, you know, the bogey that he made instead of the par. Because it really makes you think. I, I, I'd I be shocked if this was the first time in Jordan's career where, you know, a playing partner put him down for the wrong score. You just don't hear about those instances because Jordan, you know, probably fixed them. But, you know, if I had to take a guess, he's been around, what, 10 years now? it seems probably likely to me that, you know, an issue like this happens and when it gets corrected, you just don't hear about it. Yeah. Um, but obviously this one didn't get corrected probably cause he was sick, but uh, it's just an unfortunate rule. That's obviously, I think we've kind of said that it is what it is. Um, he's been playing great golf, kind of what I alluded to just in the introduction. I'm not going to really put a whole lot of weight into a Friday round where he was feeling way under the weather 
I'm just more excited to, you know, hit this three week stretch run in come Thursday afternoon. Well, a reminder of Thursday, which I believe was six under or five under. Five, I think. I believe six. it was five. Made the turn in five, played even on the back, I believe. Um the putter was back on Thursday. Uh and it had been another good week. Uh or it was a great start is what it is what it was. Um yeah, it was a sixty six on Thursday. And then of course a seventy three on Friday that ended with a double bogey, uh a couple missed short putts. I think maybe three or four putts inside of five feet were missed. Uh, um kind of those throughout those two days. You could kind of tell that once he was reported it was he was sick. I kind of was like, oh. This actually makes some sense, um, which is unfortunate because uh, I think he would have rounded up a pretty good week. Uh, I mean, like he was five under after day one and eight under was a top 10. So, like, was he really going to be in contention? Maybe, but I think it would have been a, a pretty good finish nonetheless for for Jordan. Um, and then a couple couple fun weeks after Mexico was – kind of cool this year uh jake knapp won uh that i think is we're talking about a little bit because he hit the ball at a scheffler level and actually made some putts uh which is ridiculous uh, he gained over two shots on approach the whole week uh just about one off the tee although he had a couple uh loose tee balls late but I mean, he's he's rolling right now. Played well at the the Cog down in Palm Beach, but <laughs> any any other sort of takeaways from the I guess the Genesis, but then also the the first kind of two non West Coast events. Um, I guess just talking about the Cognizant a little bit. I know there was a lot of um fire in the golf, you know, Twitter world, X world about how easy the course was playing. Um, I definitely agree with that. I think kind of we like to see courses play tough. And I know our man Andy Lack put out a tweet basically saying how the tour kind of made a, you know, a they made a decision to make the course easier. Um, they took the reins of the event, you know, made it easier for the players, which is, I mean, he really put a really good tweet out there that I kind of agreed with wholeheartedly. Um, disappointing to see how, I guess, easy it played. Um, you don't really, I guess, with the changing of the 10th hole from a par four to a par five like yeah. why like i just don't really see the need to do that i mean but um i guess entertaining two weeks the jake knapp story has kind of been fun you know i had him in our triple double for the cognizant we didn't have an episode but i had him in there played some good golf for me fun to watch pretty fun swing to watch um pga national still a fun course to watch with the water all over the place can make birdies can make big numbers kind of as we saw Scoring was lower, but there were obviously some big numbers out there. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my main takeaways from those last two weeks before we really hit, I guess, the big boy golf coming up. Yeah, it continues a trend of, um, if you're into odds and betting, of long shots winning on tour. Jake Knapps has been the shortest one in the calendar year at 40 to 1, um, which is kind of crazy because he's a rookie and had like four starts leading into it. So, this kind of transitioning into API, this seems like a good weekend for a good week, good weekend for the PGA Tour to get some of their big names in serious contention on a Sunday and close it out. Obviously, Hideki won at Riv, but I think it's the PGA Tour is hoping they get a Scotty, Rory, Victor, Xander, Spieth sort of uh, clash come Sunday like they did last year, which... Frankly, I, I mean, I couldn't watch um, last year on Sunday, which is disappointing because it was an electric, what, first 14 holes for, for Mr. Spieth last Sunday, last year on Sunday at the API. But, um, I mean, all the big names were in the mix. And given that it's a signature event, it seems like it's lining up to be, uh, hopefully, some some true true household names other than as i mentioned hideki finally kind of like dueling it out like the the way these 
um, stacked leaderboards or stacked fields are supposed to shake out on Sunday. Yeah, it's well said. Uh, last year, I know you kind of said you didn't get to watch. It was, I know Data Golf has a metric where they rank tournaments, and it was ranked as their most like entertaining tournament of the year. Um, and it really was. There were a ton of guys down the stretch that had a chance. It was a fun watch. Um, obviously not fun to kind of watch Jordan, I guess, unravel after the hot start on Sunday. It was a very, very, very winnable tournament for our man. Um, still kind of sucks he didn't get it same with freaking 21 but um yeah the the tour is kind of looking for i guess one of those weeks i mean you got the api this week players next week um you've had a bunch of long shots kind of win as you've alluded to um but you know these next two weeks you're going to get your big boy fields and you're kind of i mean well we've only played two signature events so far so i guess we're still very very early in the year you had chris kirk win and then you had um, Pebble. We won at Pebble. We won at Pebble. Oh, no. I know. Oh, no. This is terrible. This is not a good look. Wyndham uh, Clark. So you had Wyndham win, who he won the U.S. Open. Uh, it was a three-day event, so I guess. You know. Yeah, it was, yeah that, that, he he won. <laughs> he won the event. So you've only had you two got signature. You've got a live trophy. You've only had two signature events so far, and you're seeing all the live people come out on the X or Bird app saying, oh, the PGA Tour's watered down. PGA Tour hasn't played many big events yet this year. You're really going to see over the next two weeks, um, you're going to have another signature event, and then obviously the players, if you're having, I guess, non-big names win those, and I guess you have a point. But, I mean, the PGA Tour season is still very much in the early goings here. Yeah, and plenty of good events coming up in the next few weeks. And I think what the PGA tour needs is some of the non big fields like the Phoenix, like Phoenix wasn't a uh, signature event. So it had a full field and it had a great finish. Chuck Hoffman and, and Nick Taylor dueling it out. But what they need is like a, a f I think the smaller fields to me add a little bit less like uh, overall drama on a Sunday. If it's like, if it's a Rory Scotty battle, on Sunday, that's sick. But I think it's cooler if it's at a field that there was a cut and there was 150 other guys in it because I think you then get names mixed in. Like, uh, I'm just going to scroll all well, all these guys. You get a Sammy Valamaki in the mix or a Taylor Moore kind of throwing his name in the in the shuffle, right? Guys that aren't, like, um, as well known along with those big guys in the uh, kind of massive fields. And... You know, these like 70 man fields that just don't really do it for me. Uh, but the players will be a big one. And then the Valspar is shaping out to be a pretty good um, regular tournament. I, Spieth, Thomas, I believe Cantlay, Shoffley will be there. Not that those guys are like the most entertaining to watch, but they're big names and it shouldn't mm -hmm. be a fun three week stretch here. Um, as we, gear up for the masters i mean this is this is an important stretch because i was thinking about this kind of over the last couple of weeks or it just kind of popped in my head one time but i believe doing my math correctly that speeth has played a total of 13 rounds in 2024 i think that's the number yeah and 17 if you include the the hero but i no nah, that doesn't count that's, you know, I'm not counting that. That's it. 13, like, like he's going to double that before the Masters. Mm -hmm. And the Masters is six weeks away. Is it that close? I think so. Yeah, it's his it's March API, yeah. API players, Valspar, Houston, Valero, Augusta. Yeah. I mean, like, we're, you know, talk about wanting to win a major championship or shoot even a players or something it's go time like there there's no more warm-up like we came out of the west coast swing he speeds played pretty well in a lot of those events but it's like now it's time to show some real consistency we saw a good week at um century and then a bounce back at Phoenix and it, what looked like a good week in, in Riv that was then cut short. But that kind of struggle at Pebble, um, 
was was not ideal and just taking so much time off which it makes sense based on the schedule but it's also like dude <laughs> like you're not you don't have a lot of opportunities to play uh and like leading into the players at best he'll have played 17 rounds going into the going into the players um and that's supposed to be a big deal um so I'm at an interesting spot with Speed's game. I'm I'm really not sure. I I guess I don't really know what to expect this week or expect the next three weeks because I feel like we left on such a sour note, but that's partly because the expectations became so high because he was playing well. So I'm kind of curious your like, thoughts on what to expect or how to make sense of this early part of the season. Gotcha. I mean, well, you mentioned it's go time. I mean, you know, you know, it's go time when Cam McCormick is actually posting videos of Jordan Spieth swinging a golf club at a that practice was nice. session that was nice. know, on his Instagram with a Buddha quote. So, you know, it's go time when that's happening. Um, no, I definitely hear your frustration, though. He's definitely played less golf than pretty much like anyone else, because a lot of guys plays Amex. He didn't play Amex. Um, Rory, Rory played Farmers. Or Farmers. Rory played Cognizant. So he's played... Jordan's played what four times? Four events, but like, one of them, like Pebble, was shortened, and then the the yeah. unfortunate DQ at at yeah. Riv. So I guess some stuff was out of his control. Obviously, the DQ, I guess, kind of in his control, kind of not. But that's beside the fact. He's only played four. He's entered four events. Most guys have played at least five. So yeah. he's definitely he's definitely behind. And even if well, he'll play four leading into Augusta, which will probably about be what most guys play. Um, but I guess regarding this game, because I'm just jumbling words right here, um, I feel pretty <laughs> I feel pretty good. Um I, I I probably feel a bit more optimistic than how you're sounding, just because he's I I know we look at the Rob Bolton of the PGA tour, he does his power rankings every week and they're kind of, you know, they are what they are. I don't really put a whole lot of stock into them. But the one thing I do put stock into is that if I would come up here, Jordan Spieth is shot like in the 60s and 11 of his last 12 rounds. And that to me, I mean, he shot 60s at Century every single day. The only, what, the only outlier was 70. Genesis. Genesis. Like he's playing really good golf. Um, Pebble obviously sucked, but he bounced back at Phoenix. Riviera was going to be a good week. Um. I don't really have a whole lot of concern. I guess kind of what you you were saying though, like from a consistency standpoint, like playing a lot of golf consecutively and like building off of weeks would be kind of where yeah. I like to see it. Um, I feel really good about the putter. Um, yeah. I'm not really putting a whole lot of stock into the Friday at Riv. I mean, the short misses still are, ugh, they freaking suck, man. But yeah. if he can offset it kind of like he's been doing it with the speed, with how it's, you know, kind of been as of late where the speed's really good and he's draining them from outside you can afford a slip up, obviously not three or four slip ups in a round, but I mean, just looking at his, you know, his data golf page, I mean, he's putted at a, at an elite level for eight of the 12 rounds that have been tracked. Yeah. I mean, that's really, really good. The other round at what spyglass obviously wasn't tracked. That probably would have been a negative, but eight of 12, eight of 13, he's putting really, really well right now. Um, the driver from what we've seen so far this year has been really good. Um, short game, obviously world class. It's really just the iron in the what just the iron in the wedge play, acting like yeah. that's such a small thing. That's a massive thing, and it's not where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. But um, you will get a better look, I guess, these next three weeks to really see where that is, because that's about my only question mark right now. Um, the yeah. putter, the putter's not back yet. We're not out of the recession by any means. I think you'd probably agree with me, but it's yeah. It seems to be building some confidence that we haven't, I guess, had in a while. Cause he's it's just the bad rounds, I guess, like Genesis Friday can't be as bad as they were. And again, I'm kind of just throwing that round out because he was sick. But like when the speed's good, he makes a lot of putts, and I kind of feel pretty confident about that now. It's just if I'm giving Jordan Speed the wedge from 130 yards, can he throw it close? And that's kind of been something we're I guess we're still working on right now. I'm sure he put in a lot of work with it over the break with Cam. Yeah, it's the stat about playing in the 60s is very nice to hear Um, because that I think is a sense of that is a testament to consistency. Um, And I think your point about the putter is that he's actually scoring pretty well, like 
he's maximizing his rounds in ways that he didn't do the past two seasons. Um, there's a level of uh, confidence, I think, when he stands over a 20-footer that hasn't been there in a while. And, and that's, I think, I can see that in him, but also, like, as a viewer who watches every, pretty much every shot that he's got shown, like, I feel like, ah, oh, this got a chance, you know? And, and that's a different, a much different vibe um, than years past. I think the putter... Uh, has reached peaks this season that is more than good enough to win. I think the short game has, and I think the driver has been good enough to win. You mentioned the iron play, and we talk about winning because he's he's played well. The iron play has not been good enough, I don't think, nope. to win uh, any of these events without one of the other areas popping. And here's what I'll say uh, to the point about some of these numbers. Because he's driving it better, he has to hit better irons to be a really elite iron player, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Because he's he's got good looks because he's driving it well, right? But at the same time, so I'm okay with wedges uh, from that 125 to 150 range, maybe not being... You know, we haven't seen a lot of darts necessarily from that, which um, iron play is what drives winning for the most part. But if he if he's just not creating bogeys from that that area, I think it's like the trade off of like if the putter's working, then it it kind of evens itself out. I think the issue is that there's still some iron swings that from like one sixty five fairway light and variable wins but to him it's humming 20 or whatever it might be uh you're getting bogeys out of the middle of the fairway and that's that's the i still think there's too many like dumb misses in the bag especially if the putter's rolling like that uh and i think you could make the case that there's not enough darts in there as well so i I see both sides to it but either way one of them has to occur more of it's like we got to eliminate more of these really just like dumping it in a bunker, making a bogey from the middle of the fairway, or we have to hit that shot to five feet instead of 25 feet. Um, and we'll see. And then the scoring wedges have to be better. I mean, you, you touched on that a little bit. Like he's just not that great from inside of 125. Um, I think inside of like 80, it's been better. Some of those little pitches have been getting closer. Um, but that's certainly the area that I hope some serious work has been done over these past two weeks uh, as he rounds into some of these events. Because the long irons have been good, I believe. Right? Like, that's been one of the surprising kind of um, uh, trends this season is that the long game has actually been good enough to win at elite golf courses. Um but I, I don't know if you have any like numbers in front of you on some of the short stuff. Yeah, I, I do. Pull. I um, he's like your big boy golfer right now. He's the guy that drives it super well and hits a bunch of good long irons. But when he gets close with a wedge, you just can't. <laughs> again, it's it's crazy because that's it's as you said it's a few man. a few podcasts. It's it's whack a mole with Spieth, and that's why he hasn't been, I guess, an elite golfer in so long. Because just like one of the moles has not been good enough to carry everything but it seems like we're at a point where we're somewhere like closer than we've been in the past but yeah playing i guess devil at devil's advocate here i mentioned the putting numbers putting what gaining strokes or having elite putting rounds in eight of 13 rounds this year he's only had three elite approach rounds this year that have been measured so um not good in that regard um what's what's your definition of elite like it's over one uh, or... let's see what data golf has it i think it let's see here i think 1.5 okay gained approach per round is what they categorize as best yeah that's what so I'm, that's the benchmark i'm using right and what uh, do they have like a, a good or a mid or a below mid or whatever i mean he's lost strokes on approach in five rounds okay yeah so that <laughs> right there is a good indication of where the iron play is at i think 
Yeah, it's it's not good. He's I mean, he he's got 40, 42 shots from 100 to 150 yards in the fairway. Proximity is 25 feet, which is in the ninth percentile on tour since January 1st. So it's not been good at all with the scoring clubs. Um, Say that again. Yeah. 42 like shots. <laughs> proximity of 25 feet. Uh, that's ninth percentile on tour since January 1st. And that's from 100 to 150. 100 to 150. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 25 feet on average from 125-ish. It, it's not been good. It's not been good. That is not winning right there. No. That's oh where... God, that's terrible. That's where probably about 80% of the focus should be right now. It's just scoring clubs. Because if you're hitting so many fairways, you're going to have chances. Yeah. And, I mean... You see what Scotty Scheffler does, and I'm not trying to compare Jordan to Scotty, but Scotty, 20 feet with a long iron, dart with a wedge, like he yeah. gives him, yeah. And Jordan's going to make more putts than Scotty, we yeah. hope. So well, you just got to, yeah, gotta... it's trending that way now that he he'll make more putts. And you talked about this before, like Jordan can't compete with those, the Rory's and the Scotties ball striking wise. He has to be a better putter than them. Yeah. And for a majority of this season, he has been. He's been a better putter and a better chipper. But at the same time, he was also an elite wedge player and an elite iron player. And yeah. I'm not saying, because I think the speed of 15 through 17 is it is not coming back, but I think the elite, like, if each of the traits hits the elite that he's got in there still, that we've seen, Right, because the elite approach play rounds are still there. The elite putting rounds are still there. The driver's been probably better than it ever has in terms of distance, sort of accuracy, all that combination. Short game's still great. Like in theory, that adds up to one of the like the best player in the world. And I think that's why sometimes it's it's hard to not set expectations so high because you know that if every one of those things clicks the way we've seen it before. It's like, yeah, he's clearly one of the best players in the world because he outweighs, he makes up for some of the ball striking numbers um, by hole in 30 footers. And I don't know. I mean, that's, we keep touching on it, but that's just kind of where we're, we're just waiting for all the, well, the most puzzle to pieces. Yeah. Once. No. Um, but and and a, I, interestingly though, I don't think that he needs all of that to win. Like I think each of the tools, the four tools, could be elite enough to kind of overcome the other one. But overcoming iron play is probably the hardest to do. That's I'd a say. tough ask unless you're just making everything. Yeah. So it it'll be something worth monitoring this this week. Um, especially as we kind of mentioned, like gearing up for Augusta, gearing up for the players. He usually does a good job of tuning up for these events. Um, so I'd expect some decent golf this week, but, uh, and he's also played well here, a couple of T4s. We haven't even really touched on the course of the course history, but um, I love uh, Arnie's event. I love Bay Hill. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, Bay Hill's fun. We hear all the time. It's kind of like one of my least favorite phrases in golf, but the next couple of weeks are second shot golf courses for sure. You got to, especially API. I mean, there's some very, very tricky approach shots. Um, you got some wind to deal with the next couple of weeks in Florida before we really get the, I mean, Valspar is the same way, but just looking at the two, I guess, bigger events. Um, he's going to get tested. There's going to be some demanding approach shots. Um, I, I don't want to really say like the courses we've played so far don't have demanding approach shots, but like Pebble is more like just wedges. hit it close, whereas like API is like, can you step up to the 200 yard par three and, you know, yeah. hit a good shot, which he's done a pretty good job of. Yeah. Um, in theory, you would think these next two weeks are tougher courses kind of fit what he's been doing right now, where you don't need to hit a bunch of wedges really close. It's more about just the way he's been playing, like with the long irons you would think this week, next week fit him well, but um, he's going to get tested. 
um it should be fun i as you kind of said i love bay hill too very fun course was very annoyed when he didn't play it in 2022 uh back-to-back t4s it's a spieth venue i mean yeah. he should put he's putted he does he's done everything well there the two times he's played um just really would like to have another shot on sunday just because i think this is a place he should win at bob kind of likes to say that regarding some venues um it is a spieth golf course short game necessary um great greens to put on fun track yeah i summed that up pretty pretty darn well there um t times i believe 1 10 thursday with xander and then 10 a.m eastern on friday also with xander the twosome uh pairings are kind of fun um and east coast you know that that eastern eastern standard time tea time is is kind of nice actually uh compared to the the old like one o'clock west coast time which means starting at four eastern which is just a little uh little much for me to be honest but uh any any other thoughts on spieth api before um, we get into a few other players Anything left on speed? No, I think we've kind of covered everything. Um, I guess maybe wait. a prediction for the next three weeks, uh, or this week slash the next three weeks. Like, is there is there a win in there? This is what I've been thinking about. Predicting a, a win is so hard, Daniel. You know that. You've got three weeks to do it. Yeah, but I mean the and middle. I'll throw the you, Texas. I'll throw the Texas one in there. Well, that helps a lot. But I mean the middle one. He's historically played terribly at. I think he could win that one. Uh, <laughs> like, I think out of all of them, it would be so speedy to just win the players. I've been on record saying that I think he can win there at that golf course if he just finds a hot putting week. Um, yeah, because he, he never putts or chips very well there. Oh, man, does he win? I don't know if he wins, but I will. I must say I really want a final group in the next three weeks. That's kind of like that my big nice. ask. I really uh, want... Like yeah. he said, chances on Sunday so far this year, but they really haven't been, I guess, like real high quality chances. If you hear what I'm saying, mm-hmm. I'd really like for him to, you know, be able to set the tone and be in a final group over the next three weeks. That's kind of my ask. Really, a final group at API or the players. Not that the Valspar is small, but yeah. getting a little greedy here. It'd be nice to get a final group at one of the next two weeks. Yeah, it would be. It'd be nice to get the Valspar back, though. I don't disagree. That be a two-time kinda, champion. That he kind of just left it up for grabs last year. Um, I mean, he, some would say he bottled it, which it's it's hard to argue with oh, that no. tee shot. On I, re- 16, I remember this review podcast when I was completely in disagreement with the bottling. God, I, hate I mean, yeah, it was a really bad swing at a really bad time. Um, so that's why I hate golf sometimes, Dan. Yeah. Everyone forgets that he shot 70 on Friday, too, and gained less strokes that day than he did on Sunday. Right. And, well, he played a perfect Sunday until 16, 17, yeah. 18, which is so brutal. For the listeners out there, every stroke matters. It doesn't matter what day it is hit. They yes. all matter the same. The ones on Sunday just, you know, pop more. Very true. And I think Saturday, too, was a very, like, seven birdie, five bogey type of day where it's like, yeah. dude, just – Stop making some dumb bogeys, and you're too clear of the field going into Sunday. Um, yeah. So I guess my my thing is I want to be feeling better about where we're at headed into the Masters than I am right now. And I'm not sure what that means, and I think it probably means a win. Um. But, and I think they're good chances because I think I, we talked about obviously doesn't play well at the players, but the players is kind of that course for like nobody, everybody has kind of their ups and downs. There's so like Rory's one and he's missed the cut. Um, I, I know, uh, God, who's the, I know JT is, has had some struggles there too. Um, but speed out of T four there in fifteen, like it's 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 kind of all over the place. Um, he's played well here, smaller field. He could, who knows? There's a chance for some separation in this pack. Um, 
but uh yeah so i'm excited and i do have i guess i'll pull up the triple double stuff right now because it was not a good week for me at the cog we've been playing um this little game and for those of you that don't know what this is um it is we we pick three golfers a week we can only use them twice throughout the season and it's basically one and done uh but two and done and we pick three of them and you get the amount of money that they get uh from that week uh and then you add it all up and that's whoever wins wins um so I'm in last currently with $1.22 million. Uh, and I got a total of $0 at the COG. Uh, Spence and Berger, Bez, all missed the cut. Fantastic. Curious if we'll have any other week this year where someone goes three missed cuts. Yeah, that was impressive. Kind of hard to do. <laughs> Especially, well, Bez was like four above the cut line with eight to play and then missed by one. Berger and Svensson both matched 75s on Friday after being under par on Thursday. It's just kind of brutal. But, Jordan, you actually have the lead. You're up on Bob by about 60 grand. Uh, 1.5, or you're close to 1.6. He's at 1.5. You had Hoagie, Jake Knapp, and Eric Cole give you a zero burger last week. It's kind of tough. It is tough because I can only use them one more time. And he's a pretty well. I say he's yes. a pretty decent golfer, but he just absolutely choked the bed for me. Yeah. So. The Jake Knapp play was nice, though. It was. It's funny too. I was on. I don't really use Twitter when I make my picks, but like, I once I make my picks, I kind of see if anyone is like betting him as well. No one mm-hmm. was really on Knapp last week, which was kind of weird. His iron play has been like that's kind of the first Elite. thing I usually look at, and like, um. Pretty good. I like the course fit. I went with him, and he played pretty well. So that was nice. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then Bob went with Lowry, Poston, and Pavon. They all made the cut. Lowry had a tough Sunday, and Poston finished like basically dead last. Uh, but it was a good 400k week for him. You guys about about even on the week. Poston's funny. Bob got you with the Poston by 20 grand, but that means I'm coming out swinging this week. Uh, I don't have. Dan, I have one question for you first. Yeah. Do you remember when we were on Poston? I do. We were on Poston at... Wow. So Poston has won us a total of 19 grand. We were on collective. at Phoenix, right? Yep. Missed the cut. T10 at the Genesis, and then a 66 for Bob. <laughs> he just completely lets us down All whenever over we the play place. Yeah, that's he's not a fan of this this event. Go get that um, podcast. I've missed too many cuts. Somehow Justin Thomas got zero dollars at the Genesis. Uh so that's a big one. Yeah, that is a big one, especially because I thought he was playing better, but he and Speeth actually had a tea time. Well, no, they didn't because Speeth was sick. But Thomas <laughs> had a tea time at the local LA Muni on Saturday. Anyway. Uh do you have your players or no? I do not, unfortunately. Okay. I, I'm i not sure that I have all three either, but you what I do have, them? I'm loading one of the biggest bazookas you've got. I know it's, who it is. But... It's McElroy week. Yeah, I was about to say. And I need it because... So what's interesting is that these signature events are actually, in this format, more valuable than the majors. I, yeah. I was about to say. They make more money. So... The majors are like, they're important, obviously. And maybe we could fine tune it a little bit going forward to where like there's something. Increase like the if majors, you I hear you. The winner of the major, you get an extra blind. Bonus. It's a good idea. But the players is really the event that you want yeah. your best guys in. Um, But anyway, so I'm going Rory here. He just like wakes, rolls out of bed and top 10s here. I just need some cash. <laughs> very seriously considering Victor Hovland. Um, the numbers were a lot better at Genesis. He's had some time back here at Florida to work. The short game has not been good, but it, he's played well here while it hasn't been good, so that's encouraging. Um, and then Fitzpatrick is actually sneaky good here, but his numbers are not great as of late, so I'm kind of waffling on him a little bit. But I, I'll just – I mean, I'll just put him in right now. Rory McIlroy is – 
Yeah, making top me dog this week. Uh, he's playing all right. It's not McElroy standards, but like I said, he just kind of he's just gonna find his way to like T eight this week at worst, and I just kind of need that. So the floor is very high there. The floor is very high, and I'm I'm tempted to just roll out Scheffler again for the second time already, but <laughs> I think I need to save some of my my big boys for later in the season. Um, I thought about Spieth. I can't lie. But I think I need to see. I think I might actually be saving him for next week. I have a, I have worthy a, of a big money event. <laughs> I have a weird I have a weird feeling about a weirdly good feeling about the players. That's just what I'll say. I'll no, say I mean I'm on board. If he plays well this week, I'm not just gonna think it's gonna go back to crap next week. No, I agree with you. Like I It'd be fun to go into the players as like one of the top five or six and, names. On and the, the players is like dudes miss cuts there and then they win. Like it's that kind of course. Um and I think if he because he's always he actually drives it well there, even when he's driving it bad. Like in 2020, I remember before it got cut. I think dude hit like 13 fairways on Thursday. And he it was like and, and he he lost like three sh- shots on the green or something ridiculous <laughs> um, classic speed that sawgrass man yeah so it's like shoot if the putter's rolling like i don't know i'm just putting it out there floating it out there um phone a friend <laughs> phone a, i mean shoot you never know but um yeah any any final thoughts should be a fun week should be featured as well i didn't mention that earlier but uh featured for sure on friday i'd imagine and thursday will be the back nine so yeah, no, no, no closing thoughts really for me. Um, fun three weeks coming up though. These I'm are excited. usually tricky golf courses, which I've kind of been waiting for. Um, what Phoenix played relatively easy with the wet conditions and the freaking yeah. ice there. Pebbles always relatively easy. Century has been easy. Um, and then Riviera, we obviously only saw two rounds, and these next three tournaments. I'd fully expect at least two of them to probably play over par for the week, which will be fun. Yeah. Really, you know, just, I don't know. It's more fun to watch a challenge when a par is a good hole and a hard hole and birdies aren't all over the place. But um, yeah, it should be, I'm really excited. Jordan's been playing good golf. Don't really put any stock into that Friday round. Hopefully he keeps it that way. Plays well this week. And that was a fluke. Um, Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. No, I, I, well said. Um, I I don't know this for sure, but I believe the West Coast just it was really wet this year. Like obviously we saw that, but I think Florida's been a bit drier for sure. So there should be some wind, some firmer conditions. You know, seven irons won't be spinning back towards the hole, that kind of stuff. Um, the weekend's gonna nice. be windy. I remember I saw that. that. Yeah, um, and then an always fun tradition is the players tea times coming out on sunday of the <laughs> nbc broadcast during the api uh they usually only drop two groups and they're like the two mega groups or whatever uh odds that jordan is in one of those groups pretty high okay and odds that mr guess. woods is in one. Oh, very high we're waiting economically high i think he plays he plays 100 yeah, percent. i think so what so if you had to guess Tiger's group and Jordan's group that get announced on Sunday. Maybe put them together. Oh, well, see, that just is just him. That's just destroying the golf course, I think. How about Tiger, Spieth, and Pavon? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Tiger, Tiger, Spieth, and Sam Burns. Scotty, Rory, and Hopland. Yeah, well, so I think I think Scotty Rory Hovland is going to be one because it's the top three guys in the world on the tour. On the tour. Rahm is on the, Rahm is, Rahm is on the live. <laughs> um, yeah, I could. I mean, I could see Spieth, Thomas Fowler. Like, that's something that they would do, uh, especially if Ricky, who actually played decently at the COG, uh, if he plays well this week, I could see that for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Tiger will be, or I mean, if Tiger's playing, it could be him and JT. So again, <laughs> yeah, because like you can't so, separate those two. I don't know. Augusta we'll will. Oh, Augusta will for sure. It'll be Tiger, 
Pavon nap or something like that. Nap which in would the field. You, that would be kind of fun. Uh, or Tiger and Neiman. Tiger you know what Neiman, Augusta? Augusta needs to pair Nap and Bryson together. Once we get there, that would be fun. <laughs> Nap, Bryson, and who else is a bomber? Nap, Nap, Bryson, Rory. Yeah, why not? That'd be fun. Group, yeah, that'd be that. That would be fun. That would be. Fun. I'd enjoy that. Uh, we're getting too far ahead of ourselves, though. Yes, sir. But, all right. Well, hopefully, we see you all live on Sunday night. For but, victory pod. If not, we will see you hopefully Monday morning because should be, be less cool. busy going forward. But for sure. But all's well. We'll catch you in. on the social medias. Take care. See ya.